learning technology design principles. In previous videos, I talked extensively about ecosystematic views of education, the importance of conducting a thorough needs analysis, and also considering the contextual findings in every step of the design process. In this and following videos, I'll talk about the next steps and key components in designing a learning environment. I'll also present some sample models I have developed and implemented in subsequent videos. For the final project in this class, you may be thinking about designing an e-learning or mobile learning models or a series of systems or applications designed to support blended or hybrid learning for global classrooms. Some of you might be more interested in social networking aspect of learning, data mining and learning analytics tools, new credential modeling like different badges for different competencies, etc. Perhaps a new university model. Anyway, when you come up with great designs, I'll try my best to present selected projects while helping you get resources from various investment and supporting communities so you can continue to develop and eventually make your course project a reality, whether your project is a nonprofit or for profit model. I just hope that topics I cover here will be useful for you in your designs. At any rate, in most of cases, you'll be setting up some design principles that will guide you in your design process along the way. What should be the guiding principles and how do we come up with them for today's learners? As I have experimented various types of learning models and educational technology solutions for formal, informal, and non-formal education settings around the world, I have learned a few principles somewhat similar to and also distinguishable from what others have identified. These principles are certainly the results of examining education solutions and implementations at an ecosystematic level and evolutionary view. I looked at each solution or model as a species and examined the phenomena around it within an ecosystem. For example, I looked at how species in the existing ecosystem interact with the new solution or how solutions and models evolve over time to better meet the changing needs and conditions in education ecosystem. An ecosystem here is often a classroom, school, district, community, both online and offline. An ecosystem may be a sub-ecosystem of a larger ecosystem, and there are always interactions between ecosystems, and of course, between a species and ecosystem as well. Sometimes, multiple solutions or species compete in the same ecosystem, Sometimes a species must evolve over time to be more competitive. Some species are capable of evolving and adapting in an ecosystem, and some are not. Some evolve faster with a faster clock speed, and some solutions or design teams genetically cannot evolve and end up facing extinction. In fact, you'll find such evolutionary phenomena in every sector and industry. Sometimes your evolution clock speed itself determines if your solution can survive or not. Overall, here are the principles I learned from various education technology projects. The first one, simplicity is innovation. Simple design, simple to understand, simple to use, simple to maintain, simply better, and more sustainable too. If you are considering designing a solution for the developing world, simplicity is often more important than cost. For example, Cheaper notebook computers or tablets do not necessarily mean innovation in the developing region. More fragile parts, more non-essential features make your solution less durable, harder to understand, and harder to service, and harder to survive. User interface with many colors, lots of features from the very first screen, too many steps to get one thing done, etc. make adoption and use very difficult. Some technology startups brag about how their solution is better than other solutions, simply because it does more than existing competing solutions. They indicate that students and teachers will be able to do numerous XYZs so that they will blow other competitions out of the water. My advice to you is that when you design a new system or learning environment, focus on one fundamental difference. If your one fundamental feature is not innovative, the rest may not matter. 
Think about what is the most fundamental problem or issue you want to address with your innovation. If you can address one fundamental issue really well, the rest could be complementary in bolstering your main solution. In terms of addressing a need, there are two types of needs people in general identify. One is a perceived need, the other is a real need. You'll be surprised to notice that a perceived need often supersedes a real need in an ecosystem. People might buy a nice looking tablet computer just because he or she feels it is needed, not considering exactly what he or she really needs the device for. Some school districts do the same thing. They may purchase thousands of tablets and notebook computers without a real clear pedagogical plan or consideration of teachers' readiness or perceptions on usefulness. You certainly need to look at decision makers and also users' perceived needs and real needs. As you can see, there are multiple dimensions to needs analysis. At any rate, you could design a solution for a perceived need or a real need. A solution designed for a decision maker's perceived need will have a much easier entry to the market. But shorter lifetime in the market because the solution does not address a real need. In contrast, a solution designed to address a real need may have a harder entry to the market initially but more likely to have a much longer lifetime in an ecosystem once it's successfully implemented. Overall, meeting both needs at the same time would take a whole lot of energy and innovation. This is directly linked to value perceptions of all constituencies in an ecosystem. If more constituencies in your ecosystem are on the same page and more of their value perceptions and needs are aligned, things get much easier and your solution is more likely to sustain longer. I call these needs alignment and value alignment. I hope you could leverage these points and design your solution that will have easier entry and longer lifetime. Again, the key words here are simplicity, focusing on one fundamental difference, and addressing needs at multiple dimensions.